As you all know, explaining a joke usually completely ruins and detracts from the humor. That's why I will now attempt to explain why the code got the programmers so irritated. Keep in mind that I haven't learned to read minds yet, so these are simply educated guesses and I could be wrong. I don't know why. I don't want to know why. I shouldn't have to wonder why. This comment was written in the show panel function and TF lobby container frame, which defines a bunch of logic surrounding how the HUD should draw the lobby UI that was used before Meet Your Match. All of the code in this function looks pretty normal, so the frustration seems to come from being forced to execute the invalidate layout function twice in a row which tells the HUD to load the lobby UI again every time the lobby UI is shown. Ideally, you would want the HUD to load the lobby UI once and keep it in memory, but the comments indicate that the lobby UI elements wouldn't position themselves properly unless they did this. So every time you open a lobby, it would hitch a little having to load everything again. This is utterly fucking retarded. This comes from code that pieces together the advanced options menu. A function called create controls looks through the list of settings that need to be put on the menu and fills in the accompanying interactive UI elements, also known as controls, that are required. These include the checkboxes, text entry boxes, drop down menus, and sliders. It seems the checkboxes were very stubborn with regards to color, and that's what irritated whoever was writing this. First, the checkbox's foreground color is set to tan dark. Then, the default color is tan dark. Then, the armed color, which is the color upon hovering over it, is tan dark. Then, we set the press color, selected color, highlight color, and finally, the image of the checkmark itself to tan dark. Tan dark. This shit doesn't work. Why? The comment was written in Motion Mapper's M angle about axis function. This function isn't used anywhere in the entire code base, and not even anywhere within the file the function was created in either. Presumably the function was written, then they realized there is a better way to achieve the desired results, and abandoned the function. The Motion Mapper is a command line tool included with the source SDK to copy animations from one 3D model and translate it to another such as translating animations made from male models into a set of animations for female models. This is catastrophically bad. This is commented in the cleanup possibly unreferenced textures function in the code for the texture manager. In order to minimize the memory usage of our program, we need to unload things when we're done using them. Another function called mark and reference textures for cleanup periodically checks for any textures that are no longer in use and sends them into a list, in which the function cleanup possibly unreferenced textures, reads through it and frees all the textures from memory. Of course, if we're still actively rendering things, it would be a bad time to try and start unloading textures. So the start of the cleanup function checks if the current material system render thread is 0x f f f f f f f f. This number is presumably used as an indicator of an inactive thread because as an unsigned 32-bit integer, it represents the number 42949672295. And if you manage to create that many threads, textures being unloaded while in use is the least of your concerns. The catastrophic part of this seems to be about how an unused texture cleanup is being requested while we're still actively rendering things. Yes, this causes a memory leak. This comment was found within a function called write configuration info to convars inside C material system, which basically manages everything about how different textures should interact with anything inside the game world, such as how shiny should your gun look. At different DirectX levels, certain effects aren't functional. For example, TF2's motion blur doesn't work in DX8, only DX9 and above. Since DX levels have notable differences between them, they can't all use the same settings. To deal with this, a configuration file was created that had a set of console commands per DX level. The purpose of the write configuration info to convars function is to read this configuration file, then check if any of the console commands for the current DX level haven't been acknowledged as a variable yet. If they haven't been written down yet, create a new variable to store it. Hence, configuration to console variable. 
The issue is that in the process of creating the new variables, two memory leaks occur. In order to know what console commands we have yet to acknowledge, we need to read through the entire configuration file. But since we need to read through the file first to know what console commands to create, we have to create a placeholder to store the command and another to store its setting. When we know what to fill into the placeholders, we construct a new console command by feeding the two placeholders into the convar function. Creating the console command was necessary since that's the only way the program knows how to access that information. But now, these two placeholders that we created for constructing the console command aren't being directly used and wasting space. Yet we can't delete these placeholders because the console command is simply a sign that says read placeholder 1 and 2. You could say that we can avoid creating the two variables by instead creating a method to reference a line in the configuration file for the console command. But that's even worse since you're now holding the entire configuration file in memory instead of only the information you need. So it's preferable to just delete the configuration file from memory after we're done reading it and keep the two variables. So how could we avoid this memory leak? By not doing this at all and create new console commands manually. As we're writing the code, we must put a placeholder for information we can't fill in yet. But the placeholders are the direct cause of the memory leak, so there is nothing that can be done. Thankfully, in reality, this memory leak is incredibly unlikely to occur. Besides checking to make sure the console command we're dealing with is on the special set of commands for a particular DX level, it also needs to be one of the console commands in a predefined list of commands that are permitted to change depending on DX level. So if the configuration file somehow had a console command that had to be explicitly and manually put on two lists, and still have not yet been manually created like every other console command, only then would the memory leaks happen. My hope is that this code is so up. This was found within the function draw quad in item model panel. Item model panel corresponds to a HUD file of the same name, which work to display what items are in your backpack. Besides showing an image of whatever weapon or cosmetic you have, if the item has a special attribute, the HUD also needs to reflect that with an accompanying icon. So if your item is Halloween limited or unusual or painted, an icon indicating as such should show up next to it. Handling what icon to show for Halloween or unusual items is simple. For any Halloween item, show this pumpkin head and this unusual icon for unusuals. But given that more and more paints could be added to the game, instead of creating endless copies of the same image that only differ in color, why don't we just programmatically tint one copy of the paint splat image accordingly? This was an easy task for paints that only featured one color, but trouble arose when team colored paints were introduced. One solution would be to simply split the image in half, then color the two halves accordingly. But as the developer's comments indicate, that wasn't good enough because the angle is prettier than a straight cut. So how was the diagonal cut along the image achieved? The developer who created this decided to handle the math by abstracting the paint splat image into a 0 and 1. The leftmost edge of the image would be represented as 0 and the rightmost edge as 1. Using a list called mcall paint colors, which stores a list of colors that an item was painted with, the ratio of space allocated to one color was calculated. One divided by the total number of colors found in the item paint colors list, stored as a variable named fx scale. Having calculated the percentage one color should take up, next was to define the leftmost and rightmost bounds of a given color. The leftmost point is calculated by checking the color's position in the item paint colors list and multiplying it by fx scale. The rightmost point does the same, except it also adds 1 before multiplying with fx scale. These two are then stored as fx offset L and offset R. If our list has two colors, the first color would have a list position of 0, so the leftmost position would be 0 and the rightmost position 0.5. Our second color would be list position 1, so everything shifts over with a leftmost position of 0.5 and a rightmost position of 1, creating the split colors we wanted. In combination with one more variable called fx upper lower offset, which is fx scale multiplied by 0.65, the four points of the shape could now be defined. The upper left and right points are defined as offset L or R plus the upper lower offset, 
and the bottom left and right points is the same except it subtracts from the upper lower offset, creating the diagonal. To make the colors along the left and right edges form a straight line along the edge instead of forming a diagonal, if the colors we're dealing with is first in the item paint colors list, then the upper and bottom left points are just offset L without adding or subtracting upper lower offset. If it's the last in the list, simply set upper and bottom right points as offset R. Finally, our four points are then compiled into a list called verts. The code here essentially tells the HUD to multiply the 0 to 1 values we use to represent the horizontal axis with how wide the image of the paint spot image is so it lines up properly. Then a height value which is 0 for the points along the top or a variable that is the length of the image to set the points to the bottom. And the coordinates to UV map which essentially states which part of the paint spot image corresponds to which coordinate we created just now. The HUD then reads the verts list and fills in the colors as instructed. After all those calculations, ta-da! This tiny icon in the backpack has a diagonal cut between two colors. If TF2 ever adds 8 or 20 teams, then this code would be ready to support it. But it appears whoever wrote this was upset at how hilariously over-engineered the code is.